the transcendental spiritual way of reality itself is founded on the tacit and prior perfect knowledge of reality itself. Taken from the Eletheon, the divine avataric self-revelation of his divine presence, Avatar Adidas Samraj, Volume 1. 1. The transcendental spiritual way of reality itself is not a matter of conventional God ideas. The transcendental spiritual way of reality itself is not a matter of systematized beliefs. The transcendental spiritual way of reality itself is not a matter of hopeful mythologies. The transcendental spiritual way of reality itself is not a matter of preoccupation with visionary or even hallucinatory experience. Conventional God ideas, systematized beliefs, hopeful mythologies and visionary experiences are mind forms. All mind forms are forms of mind. That is to say, all mind forms are conditional manifestations. Therefore, no mind form is truth itself. All notions that conventional God ideas or systematized beliefs or hopeful mythologies or visionary experiences constitute truth are rightly to be criticized because they are not truth itself. However, such criticism is not a criticism of the transcendental spiritual way of reality itself. Rather, such criticism is a criticism of conventional or popular or exoteric religion. And conventional or popular or exoteric religion is an entirely different kind of endeavour than the transcendental spiritual way of reality itself. Conventional or popular or exoteric religion is founded on the allegiance to a particular culturally and historically determined collection of mind forms. The transcendental spiritual way of reality itself is founded on the tacit and prior perfect knowledge of reality in all its dimensions, not merely its gross or physical dimension. Conventional or popular or exoteric religion requires a commitment to one or another variety of false views. The transcendental spiritual way of reality itself requires the utter transcending of all false views. Therefore remember this, there is no mind form that is truth itself. There is no kind of commitment to mind forms that is the transcendental spiritual way of reality itself. No criticism of any kind of commitment to mind forms is a criticism of the transcendental spiritual way of reality itself. 2. In the modern West, the findings of science are often presumed, especially by those deeply involved in or sympathetic with the scientific endeavour to have undermined the historically inherited absolute propositions of conventional or exoteric religion. However, both conventional religion and the philosophy of scientific materialism, which seeks to criticise conventional religion as if conventional religion, with the totality of the paths and ways of humankind, are characteristic and characteristically, uh, characteristically limited products of the Omega point of view, science itself. Science itself is simply a method for the free investigation of the phenomena of conditionally manifested existence. But science itself tends to be overlaid with the traditional and ancient philosophy of materialism, which philosophy is very much a part of the gross-minded Omega culture of the West. 
the scientific examination of conditional phenomena has resulted in and continues to pursue the detailed mapping of the mechanisms of conditionally manifested existence, including much detailed knowledge about the functioning human organism and about the development of various codes, modes of conditionally manifested life on earth. Of course, conventional religionists, in the attempt to defend their creationist mythologies, propagandized against evolutionary theories and other scientifically proposed ex explanations that seem to con contradict the traditionally held views of conventional religion. Equipped with such maps of the structures of the human entity, Proponents of scientific materialism have criticised many of the traditionally acknowledged means of accounting for human experience, including spiritual experience and realisation, claiming that conscious experience amounts to nothing more than evidence of how the human brain and the extended human body are built to function. According to this scientific materialist point of view, spiritual experience and realisation, and indeed all human experience and realisation, is merely something happening in the meat organism, determined by its presumed to be separate and fundamentally physical structuring. That conclusion regarding the nature of human experience and realisation is the superimposition of scientific materialist philosophy on the legitimate observations made by means of the scientific method. And that conclusion regarding the nature of human experience and realisation is a key fault which makes scientific materialism a false philosophy. The physical structures of the human mechanism do, in fact, pattern human experience and human behaviour, including scientific behaviour, and the entire psychophysical, psychophysical range of potential human experience and realisation, only a fraction of which has been investigated by the efforts of conventional science, can be understood in terms of my map of the seven stages of life, by means of which I have revealed how all potential human developments are intrinsically related to the various hierarchically interrelated structures of the human psychophysical and not exclusively physical mechanism. And, indeed, the findings of esoteric yogic investigation are entirely compatible with what may be observed about the structure of the human entity by means of the scientific method, which is still, in the modern era, very much in process relative to its attempt to discover explanations for the complex realities of human experience and realisation. However, the scientific materialist point of view reduces everything to observable physical structures, as if, for example, the association between human spiritual experience and realisation and certain structures in the human brain proves that spirituality is nothing but a side effect of the functioning of the brain. Since the most ancient days, all esoteric traditions of spirituality and yoga have been associated with an understanding of the real structures underlying human experience and realisation. True spirituality and true yoga are based on a direct and detailed familiarity with the cerebrospinal system, the various organs within the body and so forth. True spirituality and true yoga are not based on and indeed have nothing to do with cosmological mythologies or the conventional God ideas of popular religiosity. True esotericism is always associated with an analysis of the human structure, of the workings of that structure, and of the methods by which the esoteric practitioner can make use of that structure in the process of realisation. However, the esoteric traditions of spirituality and yoga are free of the fault of reductionism. 
In the esoteric traditions of spirituality and yoga, there is no notion that the association of spiritual phenomena with certain aspects of the human structure reduces the significance of those phenomena to nothing but the workings of that structure. Through the entire collective human process of examining the nature of conditionally manifested existence, including the scientific examination of the development of life forms on earth, the origin and evolution of the universe and so on, a single great principle is made evident. All manifestation is arising from a prior and intrinsically indivisible unity. Everything that appears is developed from what is already there, inherently and potentially. That prior unity is fundamental to the nature of reality. Therefore, it is false philosophy to presume or even insist that reality itself is reducible to the observable facts of the presumed to be separate human structure and its functioning. This must be understood. The human psychophysical structure is irreducibly part of the prior and universal unity. Reality itself is non-separate, indivisible and ultimately one, beyond all appearances. The human psychophysical structure is the equipment that is to be used by human beings for the sake of, ultimately most perfect, divine self-realization and that structure arises within the universal unity. This is the ancient esoteric knowledge. 3. Although the esoteric traditions of spirituality and yoga acknowledge the significance of the human psychophysical structure as the conditionally manifested mechanism by means of which the process of realization is exercised, those traditions also exhibit the characteristic alpha disposition of dissociation relative to the human psychophysical structure and relative to conditionally manifested existence altogether, or at least relative to the gross dimension of conditionally manifested existence. However, I do not call my devotees to any such dissociative disposition relative to their own psychophysical structure or relative to any aspect of conditionally manifested existence whatsoever. I do not call my devotees to the strategy of excluding attention from the gross dimension of the human psychophysical structure. Indeed, the only by me revealed and given radical or at the root reality way of Adidam or Adidam Vishiradam is specifically not founded on an attitude of dissociation from the existential context of the human body-mind complex. The practice of the only by me revealed and given reality way of Adidam is founded in the transcending of the human psychophysical structure, but not by means of a dissociative act. Thus, the fundamental necessary basis for the practice of the only by me revealed and given reality way of Adidam which is the way of the devotional and in due course transcendental spiritual relationship to me, is equanimity relative to one's own psychophysical structure and relative to the psychophysical context of human and cosmic existence. When a perceptually based and in due course through the locating and knowing of my divine avataric transcendental spirit baptism, Transcendentally spiritually based equanimity is established. The human psychophysical structure is thereby truly and really made into a vehicle for the divine transcendental spiritual process. Such is the true and real transcending of the fault of gross minded philosophy, according to which a philosophy, the structures of the human body mind complex, are to be understood reductively as separate somethings, and all forms of spiritual experience and realization are regarded as merely aspects of immortal physicality. 
such perceptually based and transcendentally spiritually based equanimity makes it possible for my devotee to rightly understand and relate to his or her own body-mind complex without falling into either the gross-minded or meagre error of reductionism or the alpha error of dissociation as a manifestation arising within the context of a universal unity of utter non-separateness and ultimate non-difference. Thus established in the disposition of perceptually based and in due course transcendentally spiritually based equanimity, the whole body of my devotee participates in that which is universal, one and ultimately beyond and prior to all conditions. In that participatory mode, the whole body of my devotee coincides with that which is universal, spiritually real, transcendental, intrinsically egoless, and self-evidently divine. I have accounted for all aspects of potential human experience and potential human realization that arise out of the prior and universal unity from the grossest experiences of the first stage of life to the ultimacy beyond ultimacy of the only by me revealed and given realization of the seventh stage of life. And I have done so on the basis of my direct awareness of the different structures that come into play in each stage of life or mode of development. I stand entirely apart from the conventional God ideas and, and the conventional mythologies of exoteric religion. I am communicating an esoteric way, and therefore the only by me revealed and given reality way of Adidam or Adidam Rishiradam is the completion and fulfilment of the ancient tradition of always reality based esoteric spirituality and yoga. I say, and have always said, to you, Reality itself is the only real a causal God. Reality itself, or truth itself, is what there is to realise. Therefore, in my communication about reality itself and the process of realising reality itself, I am not on the side of exoteric religiosity, nor am I on the side of scientific materialism. I am not on any side whatsoever because I am not in the position of mind or a separate point of view. My communication is a direct revelation of reality itself or truth itself which is intrinsically indivisible, inherently non-separate, intrinsically non-conditional, intrinsically self-evident and self-evidently divine. The process of realising reality itself or truth itself is inevitably related to the structures of the human being and to the structures of conditionally manifested existence altogether. But that process is ultimately a matter of perfectly or non-conditionally realising that which transcends all such conditional structures and indeed all of conditionally manifested existence itself. Thus, in making my revelation about reality itself and the process of realising reality itself, I am not merely communicating a philosophy. Rather, I am revealing myself. This, my avatarically self-given divine self-revelation, is the basis of the only by me revealed and given radical or at the root reality way of Adidam or Adidam Rishiradam. Yes, my avatarically self-revealed divine teaching word accounts for all aspects of reality itself, both, both conditional and non-conditional. But most fundamentally, my avatarically self-revealed divine teaching word accounts for myself and in so doing, accounts for my for the by me revealed and by me given way of the devotional and in due course transcendental spiritual relationship to me.